Hey there folks, Tornado Twins here and welcome to part 14 of our tutorial. This time we are going to add some more gameplay, so we're going to do a little bit more scripting. Now I know you've done a lot of scripting in the last couple of videos already, and I don't want to bore you to death, but uh, I promise you we're almost done with the core gameplay part. Um, after this I will show you how to import and use professional art assets so that it actually looks good it has some color it has some textures reflection that sort of thing we'll also look in how to generate a level uh, maybe we'll use the city engine to, to generate an entire city um, some and some other cool tools and sound and stuff like that so it's gonna be really fun after this also particle and special effects is what we have not covered yet but we will get to this but we're almost done with the gameplay so let's continue now what we've done last time is when our worm falls off the platform he respawns um, that's nice but now nothing still happens when the turret shoots at our worm and he actually gets hit now that's what we need to fix and what I was thinking in this type of gameplay is when he gets hit he spins around just like Mario Kart when you get hit or drive over a banana so something like that and then when he gets hit one of the body parts will be subtracted from the worm and if you do that two more times that means the worm is actually dying and then he will respawn and one of the lives will get subtracted so that's the difference between getting hit and actually dying now that difference is also visible in our script so let's open up our move around script and up here where we've declared the variables we already have the variable speed and rotate speed we use those for moving around and then we have the bullet prefab that we need for shooting and then we have the variable dead that we need for dying but of course we need some more variables that we need for getting hit but since this is getting a lot of variables already let's add some comments so that we know what we're doing when we open up the script next time around you know because when your script gets longer it's a very good idea to actually add some and some comments to show what was actually what now I've added moving around to the moving around variables for shooting we have these variables for dying we have this and now we need to add some new variables for getting hit now one of the things that we need to do when we get hit is spin our character around now we already have a rotate speed variable so I can't use that name twice so I'm going to name this one tumble speed and this will be the speed of him moving around now we'll make this a number and the number will be 800 just to start off with and we'll play with that later then next we need to add a decrease time and every loop so every time the engine renders a frame we'll need to change the amount of speed that he is rotating with so that he slowly stops rotating so that we can continue with our game and I made a little typo here decrease time alright and then we need a third variable which is the decay time because the decrease time will slowly add up and this will give sort of an illusion of that it from spinning fast it slowly goes down it gives a sort of a, a curve in the movement so we're, it's basically kind of a, a scripted animation so it needs to look a little bit you know up to date then we need to make a static variable which means it is globally accessible by all scripts which is the variable got hit which indicates if we got hit or not and of course that's either true or false so we're gonna set that to false by default now this is all the variables that I need but in the script we'll be playing with the decrease time and the decay time and the tumble speed because they will decrease over time so we need to make a backup of these variables and I usually do that by using an array so I'm going to make this a private variable and I call it backup which is an array and an array can basically hold multiple variables so we have tumble speed here we'll copy that paste it then comma and then add decrease time we'll save that in our backup array and then decay time we'll need that and paste it so basically when the compiler comes through it defines these three variables and then it makes the array which will back up the amount saved in here so that after we're done tumbling and messing with these variables we can set them back to their original defaults so that when he gets hit again he will spin at the same speed and not um, have any weird effects to it. Okay, so now that we have our variables, let's get into actually scripting 
um, the getting hit for our character. Now getting hit actually will do that in our late update function. And our late update function is pretty short now, but we'll, uh, let me actually cut it and then paste it up here. I usually paste it underneath the variables that I'm using so I don't have to scroll up and down to remember the names of the variables. So in our late update, update function we already have if our character is dead now we need to have if got hit now remember when we define the got hit variable here it's either true or false so this is either true or false when we're in um, when we're hit now we need to add some code here um, which isn't too hard just do an if statement and if um, our tumble speed because remember, we only get here when we're actually hit. Is smaller than the number one, then it basically means we stopped spinning around. So this is a kind of a safety net. If we stop spinning around, then we need to set everything back to the defaults. Okay? So let's add a little comment here. We're not hit anymore. Reset and get back in the game. Okay? Now let's set everything back. Tumble speed will be reset to our backup variable. And tumble speed was the first one in our backup array. So we'll do backup and then zero. If you know about scripting or programming, then you know that the first number in an array is always zero because computers start with zero and not counting with one like humans. Okay, then decrease time. we need to set that back to backup one because it's the second variable and then decay time we need to set that to backup yes you've guessed it two because that was the third one and then we gotta put got hit back to false now you might be thinking okay that's great but we never set the got hit to true well that's correct because this script actually is triggered when we stop tumbling around but now if we're not so that means if we're still spinning around then we need to actually rotate our character so let's add a little comment here we're hit spin our character around okay so and this is done using transform dot rotate make sure you have a capital R for rotate otherwise you get some errors reverse variable um, it will be X Y and Z of course and then there's a fourth variable that our engine wants to know if we want to spin him around in local or in global space that I think I've explained in part seven if I recall and in this case we wanted to spin around in the world so we'll go space dot world okay now we want him to spin around using the y axis because remember the y is always up so if you spin around the up axis you actually spin in circles so we we'll use this second variable x y and z and set that to tumble speed times or multiply by time dot delta time now remember time dot delta time is the time that has passed since the last time we've rendered a frame and this will actually make sure that it is in our movement our rotation is independent of the speed of somebody's computer otherwise somebody else will tumble really fast and can go can go on with the game and you're still spinning and he can basically win the game very easily that would not be nice okay now that we've done that you remember it's a late update function so we get here every other you know millisecond so we'll need to change the tumble speed uh, and decrease it over time equals tumble speed minus decrease time so this is where the decrease time comes in so the the compiler comes here it rotates our character then we adjust the tumble speed it comes in again it comes in again it comes in again and slowly he stops rotating over time okay now we also need to change the decrease time and say plus equals decay time so what this does is actually makes the decrease time bigger so that next time we come around it actually goes faster down to zero and that gives you illusion of animation